In this video, we're going to show you how to properly attach contacts to students inside of PowerSchool SIS. I will start off by saying this video is used for training purposes only, that no real students or data is being shown in this video. Any likeness to any real student is purely coincidental, as this is a sandbox server full of fake students and fake data. So our student that we're going to be working with today is Mickey Mouse. So as we see, we're in Mickey Mouse's record, and the contact information is located under the student profile subscreen. So if I come over to student profile and under contacts, go to contact management. So let's say that Mickey Mouse is a new student we've just enrolled and we're wanting to add contacts to this student. So we have no contacts listed. We're going to come over here to hit add and we're going to search. So I know that Stacy Royster is Mickey Mouse's mother. So I'm going to search for Royster. I typically type in the last name and I hit search and it produces no results. This happens quite often when there's actually a contact that could be lying dormant somewhere inside of there. For best practice and making sure that you get all contacts that you could possibly be looking for, you want to pay attention to the check boxes down here. This one right here is very important where it says include inactive. As a best practice, I would use that check box every single time I go to search for a contact record to possibly add to a student. Notice what happens when I now include the inactive checkbox. Now you see that I actually do have a contact already in the database named Stacy Royster. Without checking that box, I would have created a new contact because I would have assumed that one did not lie there and I would have had duplicate contacts in the database. So again, best practice when you are searching to add a contact to a student, always include the inactive as a search as well. I would be hesitant to choose this one, only show access accounts, because that again would only show you contacts that had access accounts that could log in to see the data. Now, if you are purposely wanting to search for contacts like that, you would use it, but rarely would I ever have this checked. I would only have the include inactive checked. Now that I have identified Stacy Royster that this is the contact that I do want to add to Mickey Mouse, I'm going to put the checkbox beside the name. I can go ahead and decide the relationship here if I need to. So this is mother. And I'm going to hit submit. This now attaches Stacy Royster to Mickey Mouse. Now, one of the things that we see is a lot of times people will come back over to the student profile page and go to the demographics page. Because on the demographics page, there is area for mother, father and guardian information. However, you never want to add that in there manually because this can again cause issues with the contact relationships and the contacts that are inside of the contact management portal. Instead, you want to manage all contact information and have the contact information from here right over to the demographics page. So how do you do that? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click this pencil over here to the right side of Stacy Royster. Once I do, I notice that I've filled in the relationship of what I selected when I selected her as a contact. Um, if you want to put a start date to say that some contacts are going to be like an emergency contact from the beginning of this year to the end of this year and then they roll off so that you only see current ones, then it is best practice to put a start date on there. So let's say the start date was March 4th. Okay, does this parent have custody? Yes, this one has custody. They live with them. They will be picking them up from school. Um, typically, we don't mark emergency contact for anyone outside of those. of If they already have custody, we know that they're an emergency contact. So you want to really save the emergency contact for those who are outside of the custodial ownership of the student so that you can get a true emergency contact list. Uh, for receives mail, we will click that they receive mail. And this is very important in the state of Alabama because the contacts that are marked to receive mail will be the ones that if this is a special education student will populate as those choices over inside of special programs. So it's very important when you're attaching contacts to the students in SIS that if they are a special education student that we make sure to get those custodial parents as the receives mail for special programs. Any notes that you need can be entered here. Now here is the important part. 
Original contact type. This is an old legacy function inside of PowerSchool that still will be used to write that information over to the demographics page. So over on the demographics page, we saw mother information, father information, and guardian email. If these relationship types fit those original contact types, you want to fill them in. So I'm going to choose original contact type of mother. Because once you do that and then hit submit, not only does it fill this information in here, but this is used, if I go back to the demographics page, to auto-populate the mother information inside of here. So if I did have mother's home phone, employer, and day phone on the record, it would populate along with the mother's name. So let's go back to the contact information and fill that record in to show you how it will flow over to that profile. So if I want to edit the contacts information, click into the contact name. So notice I already have some information here. So I have employer and I could put employer's information here. One of the things I want to do is actually make this contact active. Notice when I had to search for them earlier, they were in the, I had to check the inbox for inactive for them to pop up. You want the um, contact to be active so that they will then flow to extra places. So maybe if you have a call out system, um, it won't use them if they're not active. Uh, they won't flow over special programs if they're not active. There's a lot of bugs that can happen if they're not actively checked here. So you want to make sure your contacts have that active checkbox. The web access account. Maybe you allow your parents to create their own um, parent portal accounts. Maybe you want to create it for them. If you are creating it for them, we know there's that great PEX plugin that exists out in PowerSource to do that. Or we can add it here where we can enable the account. We can give them a username and password if we needed to. And we would then need their um, email address. So if I needed the existing email address I already have on file, I could create all of that so that they have a web account enabled at that point. If there are other students that need to be added to this contact, I could do it from inside this contact record. Notice the phone numbers I do have work. Um, the one that's in the old legacy side of the demographics was the daytime phone number. So if you did have different phone numbers, some parents do have multiple ones. Whichever one you have for daytime will be listed right here. If it's preferred or it's um, used for text messaging, some call out systems use that that information is there. Again, you can have multiple email addresses. So I've got the work email. I can also add in a personal email if I needed to. I can mark which one is primary. Again, these are used for um, different types of information. It's going to put something in there that doesn't really work and that's okay. And then our addresses. And once we have everything updated, we can hit submit and it updates that contact record. So if I go back into the student, so I'm going to go back to Mickey Mouse's record. And all that information is updated. I go back to the demographics page on the profile. I'm going to notice that down here, I now have more information on mother. So I'd have the day phone. If I had chosen a home phone number, it would have written it down there. So you really don't want to put anything on this demographic page. You want to make sure you're putting everything on the contact management page and making sure that you are searching and adding contacts in the correct way. So always make sure when you're adding and searching, because see, when I go back to search, that include and active is not checked. You want to have that in there. Now, let's say that Bobby Royster is the dad. And when I search, the only Royster I get is Stacy, and I need to add Bobby in, and I've truly searched every way to know he does not exist. I can create a new contact record for Bobby Royster, add and attach him to Mickey Mouse. So that is the best practice of how to use the unlimited contacts feature inside of PowerSchool to make sure you're not duplicating contacts and that you are entering in all information to flow to other areas that we use inside of this program.